Hello, um, welcome to the Conquest of Doe website. Um, I put this website together and uh, as I've been writing my new novel Conquest of Doe, I realised that all the research I'd done as a sort of a, almost a filter um, or reference point to the, the themes in the novel. Um, and uh, as the novel is kind of a, a road trip um, from uh, from Syria to the UK um, with all points in between and historical references uh, to the expansion of trade, um, different monetary power bases, uh, all around a sort of a religious significance, a societal significance of uh, bread, uh, bread of heaven, uh, manna from heaven, daily bread. Um, Kropotkin's um, famous book, or not so famous, really, and hence the novel's title, Conquest of Doe. Um, anyway, this is the website, and the headings are along the top of the page here. Um, Conquest of Doe. Uh, this is a... Uh, I'm not sure if I borrowed it from Andrew Sherriff or not, or the late, an late great and um, So... Here is the first set of maps, um, w which are taken from a number of chronologies, which um, came from the research of another author uh, on a. He, he's got another book which was on the web and I hope will get published called Towards Unity, um, and uh, I'll quote on that a bit later. Um, and these maps show different uh, power um, struggles, conflicts um, in in the region of the, what we call the Middle East and the Balkans um, and a bit wider afield. Uh, then Eurasian trade, uh, you've got the sort of the Nile Delta, River Nile, uh, um, Egyptian civilization down to here uh, and then across here down to Arabia here, up here is uh, uh, well, Canaan of old, but Acadia, um, the Syriac Empire, Turkey up here. Um, but really, in terms of mapping out this uh, uh, geographical space physically and then the uh, historical timelines, is this timeline here is particularly uh, interesting. It kind of it helps to tie it all together. Um, and then uh, I, I illustrate some of the main issues I see with uh, how perhaps, well not how perhaps, how, how we've kind of lost our touch with the land, nature and how nature provides us with food. I mean food comes from the earth, the sun and you know creatures and plants that grow from that sort of, uh, I mean that's just a simple fact. Um, and uh, having lost touch with that, we sort of wound a, a much more complex set of uh, uh, priorities and things we think are important, um, completely neglecting the, the foundation on what it's all built, and that's what the novel at its heart is about, um, using various different uh, ideas and examining different ways that power structures have organize the distribution of food and energy um, to populations down the ages um, and so there's been political religious political uh, tribal um, family society towns city states uh, these are all systems of what I would call political economy um, and in a system of political economy, you'll have uh, government, governors, rulers, um, you'll have bureaucracies run along different lines, theocracies, um, tribal systems, tribal elders, custom and tradition. All of these different ways of doing things uh, rules-based international orders, for instance, um, 
you know, what, what, what does it all mean? Who makes the rules? And then when those rules are applied, what do we use to count the interactions or the exchanges? The answer to which, of course, is, is money. But what is money? What type of money? Are there more than one type of money? Can you have several types of money existing in um, parallel with each other? The answer to those questions is, well, yes, you can. And sometimes we have and sometimes we don't. And one of the times we don't all that much is now. Um, and so these are themes that get examined in, in the novel. The first few draft chapters are actually up if you click on the tab here, uh, the novel and epic trilogy. So I've, uh, there are a few readings and what have you. Um, I've got them up here. I will be rewriting from scratch. Um, I've, I've got the whole thing planned out with all the chapters. Um, and the drafts up to about chapter seven are readable, but they're not finished. Um, but it, it gives an idea of what, 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 what I'm about. Um, I did actually send off an unbound submission uh, um, a few weeks back. They've got quite a backlog, and nor do I expect to hear from them at all, not positively anyway. Uh, but I'm quite happy sort of having my own little canoe learning as I go and sort of, you know, finding this stuff all jolly interesting. Um, so then you scroll down and you've got various, uh, that, that's a really good video that one, I'd recommend watching that one. Um, it's quite long, but it's from the 80s and the last sort of big sort of um, nuclear war um, consciousness raising, really, when, when we were close to seeing the button pressed, as it were. Um, more film clips, analysis from some of my famous, famous analysis uh, analysts, uh, and other things that caught the sort of that I think contextualise things very well. I mean, this is very interesting. The history of the world every year, and it shows changing and whatnot. And, um, here's the timeline again. These are uh, Andrew Sherratt's um, trade route diagrams, uh, which figure later on in the thing. And then there are various interviews. This is Bern Bernard Latier, uh, who's brilliant. Stephen Zarlenga, who was brilliant. The late Stephen Zarlenga. Um, that is Richard Werner's paper on the empirical evidence that banks do indeed create money out of thin air um, without any reference to central bank deposits whatsoever. There's nothing in the accounting or the transaction that he shows that, that suggests that that actually happens at all. Uh, this is the classic Tragedy and Hope. I think it was published in 1968 and it uh, is one of the most frank um, discussions of how um, elite competing elite democracy in the Washington consensus is actually done, why it's done that way and how that way of doing things developed over historical um, epochs or, or cycles almost um, and uh, it, it's well worth reading. I think that that links to a summary of all the different chapters, I think. Mike Maloney, Hidden Secrets of Money, again an excellent series worth watching. And this is a um, dialogue between uh, Carol Quigley, uh, William Scalson, who wrote a book called The Naked Capitalist, which uh, is based on all the same themes um, as Carol Quigley's Tragedy and Hope. Uh, and um, that's a discussion which is repays the reading. Just, and then the, this page ends with my uh, poem, uh, Tides of the Dollar Moon. Um, and uh, I think that video there is a reading ending in Tides of the Dollar Moon by a, um, a Judd Evans, um, late Judd Evans. Um, Post. But there's lots on this website, um, and um, it links to a lot of really, really thought-provoking and interesting political economy. Um, here we are now. This is the Andrew Sherritt uh, stuff here. Uh, he made a brilliant um, TV documentary for the BBC, I think it was, called... Um, uh, Sacred Weeds, 
uh, and some sacred weeds will be making appearance in the uh, conquest of Do. And I, it wasn't on that channel I put it. I think I uploaded it to um, DTube or something else. I, I'll, I'll put it in in the description. Um, but but it's it's well worth watching that. I, I, I joined them all together and put them in order on uh, one of the distributed web streaming services because they were they are they are on you can find them on YouTube and it's worth doing. Um, but I thought I'd put them somewhere else as well just in case they get taken down. Um, and uh, so let me just get back here to the. David Malone's website. Um, yeah, here we are. There it is. Um, again, these are well worth looking at because it helps to sort of get the timelines into our heads from about 10,000 years ago up till now and how things have developed since then. Um, you can say, oh, well, I could read, say, the Bible or the Torah or something, and that takes me back to, well, when does it take you back to? Well, it only that only takes you back um, about 5,000 years, um, whereas when you get into the uh, cuneiform texts, say, of Abarambi or uh, um, Saga, uh, uh, um, Sargon of Akkad and all of that sort of thing, not the YouTube chap, but the, the king that was the, um, the ruler of the Akkadian Empire. Um, these slides uh, go back uh, and, and talk about the timelines of those uh, fertile present early civilizations, um, which are foundational to what emerged later through you know further um, a further running of that model almost you could think it of um, but that's th this site gives a context to uh, a, a timeline of history um, with various sort of interesting uh, commonalities to all societies i.e how much grain have we got to make the bread and how do we distribute the bread who gets what when um, and, and, and so forth and um, uh, so that, that, that's really what the website's about and uh, you know, do please click on or uh, register on the site if you like or whatever I don't much care whether you do or you don't but um, uh, it's here if anyone stumbles on this video and, and wants to sort of get a framework within which to uh, explore this stuff um, there is a framework here which is kind of uh, available as a head start um, uh, it's not pushing any particular viewpoint you can assure you of that it's just um, it's just the framework that I've built to write my novel um, I, you know, declaration I am a monetary reform activist so I, I, I do have an interest in seeing the monetary reform uh, monetary system reformed um, but as long as the money formation is in the commons, I don't care, you know, how it's done way or the other. I haven't got a dog in that fight. I just know that what we have is broken and it needs fixing. And to fix it, there needs to be a, a conversation and um, an accommodation as to what is going to be tried or which solutions may be tried in parallel. Um, and... Uh, uh, before that can happen, more and more, more people have to realise, well, actually, it's quite a good question to ask, and that's really my motivation in all of this. Um, make of it what you will, and um, if it helps, it helps great. Um, I'm pleased. If, if it doesn't, um, or it's not of interest to you, um, well, fair enough. 